Section 2.1 is solving linear equations in one variable. We're going to talk about some of the steps to solving a linear equation. The first thing we want to do is get rid of any fractions or decimals. The next step will distribute to remove any parentheses. The third thing we want to combine all like terms on both sides of the equation. And then we want to use addition property of equality and the multiplication property of equality to isolate the variable. So, and then step six is a check, so you can check your answer and make sure it's correct. So the first thing we want to do with number one is, if we're trying to get x by itself, then we can try to determine what did they do to x. They multiplied it by negative five, so the inverse of multiplying it by negative five is to divide by negative five. Whatever you do to one side, you must do to the other, so then you get x equals six. Now. I can check my answer by taking my original problem and everywhere x is at I put a parenthesis and then I'm going to substitute 6 in place of my x and then since I have a true statement that means I know for sure that x equals 6 is my solution. Number two, if I want to get y by itself they add 30, so we want to do the opposite of that, so subtract 30 from both sides. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other. Negative 55 equals y. Now, if I want to know if that's true, I can check it. Take the original equation, and everywhere there is a variable, where there is a variable, I'm going to put negative 55 in there in place of y and I solve so I get negative 25 equals negative 25 and since that's true it means this is definitely my solution. Problem number three it's decimals in this so we want to evaluate this one is one decimal place so it's the tenths place no decimals and one decimal so the furthest decimal place we have to go through is to the tenths so it's like multiplying everything by ten Let's just move it one place to the right. If you move it one place to the right, you move everything in the problem one place to the right. So this becomes negative 41 minus 70. Z equals 36. Now if our goal is to get the Z by itself right here, first thing I need to do is move the 41 to the other side. So I'm going to add 41 to both sides. And so then that gives me negative 70 z equals 77 divide both sides by negative 70 and we're going to get z equals negative 1.1 okay I can check my answer by putting negative 1.1 right there and solving for it and see if I get a true statement number four I'm not going to I'm not going to check all of these, but if you would, it would be a great idea to check on your homework and on your test especially because you only have one chance at it. So that option's available. Number four, we're going to um, move all the variables to one side and the numbers to the other. So I like to start with the smaller variable and move it to the other side. It really doesn't matter. Either one will work, but... 5 minus 2 is 3y. To get y by itself, I need to move the number to the other side. So I'm going to move 12 to the other side by doing the opposite and subtracting 12. 3y equals negative 15. To get y by itself, if they multiply by 3, I'm going to divide both sides by 3. So y equals negative 5. Okay, occasionally I'm just going to check it so you see, so I have 5, everywhere there's a Y, I put a parenthesis, and then we said we're checking to see if negative 5 is the correct answer, so that gives me negative 13 equals negative 13, so yes, it checks. All right, let's move on up to number five. I look to the left of the equal sign, and I can see I can add like terms right there. 
8 minus 5 is a 3x. On the right hand side of my equal sign, I can add like terms right here. I'm going to get x plus 3. Now I want to move all the variables to one side and the numbers to the other. So I like to start with my smaller variable and move it to the other side. So I have 2x plus 3 equals 3. Now I want to move the number to the other side, so I subtract 3. And that's going to be 2x equals 0, divide both sides by 2, and x equals 0. Okay, you can go back and check your answer if you'd like. Number 6, 5x plus 12. The first thing we need to do is distribute right here. 2 times 2 is 4x. 2 times 7 is 14. Okay, now we want to move all the variables to one side and all the numbers to the other. So I subtract 4x. x plus 12 equals 14. To get x by itself, if they add 12, we're going to do the opposite. And subtract 12 from both sides, so x equals 2. Like I said, you can substitute that back in and see if you get a correct solution by getting a true statement. Alright, number 7. The first thing we want to do is distribute, so you get negative 12 n plus 8, because a negative times a negative is a positive, and then I have minus n equals distribute here, negative 11 n plus 11. Okay, I want to look on my equal side. Equal sign on the left, I can add like terms, so that becomes negative 13 n plus 8. I need to simplify before I start solving. And the right hand side is already simplified. Now that everything is simplified, I want to move all the variables to one side and all the numbers to the other. So I'm going to add 11 in to both sides. So I get negative 2 in plus 8 equals 11. And we'll move the numbers to the other side. So I have negative 2 in equals 3. Divide both sides by negative 2 and n equals negative 3 halves. Number 8, I want to get rid of uh, all the fractions by multiplying by common denominator between 2, 3, and 4. That would be 12. So if I multiply each term in the problem by 12, I'm going to simplify by dividing by the, the numerator the denominator. So if I divide by 2, I get 1. Divide by 2, I get 6. I want to multiply what's left over. So I say 6 times x is 6x. Plus, divide by 3, divide by 3, multiply what remains. So I have a 4 and an x. So I have a 4x. Divide by 4 this time. Divide by 4, divide by 4, multiply what's left. So I have 3 times 3 is 9. Now all the fractions are gone. I'm just going to add these two. I'm going to get 10x equals 9. Divide both sides by 10. x equals 9 tenths.